So today, F124 has been revealed with them dropping a trailer. And as as always, every year, it's, it's a nice trailer. It's very well edited, looks gorgeous. But the real juicy info is always in this press release that I always like to go through because this gives us the proper details of what we can expect in career mode. Look at all this stuff. So yes, the trailer is nice. You can go check it out. I can't play it, the audio of it because it'll get copyrighted. But in this video, we're going through all the details in the press release. And this is the real stuff. This is the real features of F124. Let's dive in. But just quickly, before we get into the press release, be sure to hit the like button on this video if you're excited for F124. And let's take a quick look at some screenshots because one of them here, the back end of a Ferrari going up through a Rouge, through Radion. This is the confirmation and first visual look at an updated, yes, updated Spa. For the first time, in literally ever so the whole F1 game sphere, Spa is finally getting an update. Yes, there are so many other circuits that need updates, to be honest, as well. But right now we know that Silverstone is getting some sort of update, but uh, Spa is getting a huge facelift, it seems, because this is very different to what we, ha what we have in the current Formula 1 games. You know, in the current F1 games, we've had the same Spa since about, like, F1 2012, I think it is. Whereas now we're finally getting, you know, that whole new grandstand section at the top of the hill through Radion, you've got that, that runoff area on the left-hand side that's all painted now. There's also mentioned in the press release with some updates to LaSalle, the Qatar Grand Prix, and Jeddah. I think those are more just about little tweaks to change certain aspects of the track to make it more like real life compared to what the game, what, what Cody's thought the track was going to be, because obviously they made Jeddah and Qatar kind of ahead of time before anyone actually got to racing uh, in their two respective cases. And they do mention uh, Silverstone, which has received a significant update to deliver authentic circuit accuracy. Although they've not shown a proper screenshot of Silverstone, like this is the actual official screenshot that's labeled Mercedes at Silverstone that they've uh, given to all the press people. Uh, and you can hardly see any of it. So I think they're keeping their cards close to their chest when it comes to revealing too much about the Silverstone update. But now actually diving into the press release and I'm actually gonna skip ahead to the bottom because I'm gonna get the career mode stuff out of the way because I know obviously I'm mo most interested in career mode. I know majority of my viewers are are into career mode. So we're going to skip ahead to career mode because this is pretty damn awesome. We're starting off with a quote from Lee Mather, the uh, game director. Our biggest career innovation since 2016 delivers more of what our players want with greater variety away from the track. Alongside new handling and career innovations, updated circuits, new audio, and a refreshed broadcast presentation gives players the feeling of being closer to the grid. So we already knew about the updated circuits, new audio. Now that's actually because they've got real life audio from drivers to play it so certain moments, um, you know, when they react to stuff, if you play as a driver. Refresh broadcast presentation. For me, as obviously a creator, that's going to be really cool to see. Hopefully they, that means like, you know, stuff like cutscenes and, you know, extra stuff based on the show and videos, basically. But as part of the revamped career mode, players can also choose from an up-and-coming competitor from F2. So not only can you play as one of the 20 drivers from the 2024 F1 season, which is one of the headlines uh, for F124 alongside new EA, EA Sports Dynamic Handling, uh, you can play as one of the drivers. So, you know, for example, right now, my mod career mode, I've modded myself as Charles Leclerc. You won't need to use a mod anymore. You can just choose to drive as Leclerc, choose to drive as Hamilton, Verstappen, etc. But along alongside that, you can choose to join the F1 grid playing as an F2 driver. So if you've actually got a favorite F2 driver, you can deliver them finally their actual F1 career. Or you can play as an icon. So you could play as like Nigel Mansell or like Senna in in driving a career mode basically and play as them uh, or create your own legacy as your own avatar. And actually, by the way, mentioning icons, we already know the two new My Team icons or an icon you could choose for driver career mode uh, coming to the game, which is Juan Pablo Montoya and James Hunt. James Hunt's a pretty cool one. He was obviously a huge character in Formula One, you know, a bit of a playboy kind of character. So that's pretty jokes to have James Hunt in there uh, and Montoya, obviously a legend of Formula One. So those are the two new My Team icons. Although, to be honest, I, I don't think anyone's going to be focusing on my team this year because all the focus is on the revamped driver career mode. But like I said, you can maybe pick these two icons to drive as in the career mode if you wanted to. Obviously, for me personally, I'll be driving as myself. But if you want to live out that fantasy, you can. But getting back to the presser, this is the big juicy bit, okay? These are the big headlines of a revamped career mode, okay? So we've got gaining recognition, build reputation, 
So we've got gain recognition, build reputation within the paddock through on-track objectives, race day tasks keep players focused on the checkered flag, completing contract targets can help secure a new deal or pave the way for secret meetings to negotiate a move to a bitter rival. So we've got a, this is probably a new reputation system away from a claim. So they've got away with a claim and all that stuff from the old F1 games. So we've got re recognition now. So that's about building reputation in the paddock and there's going to be actual on-track objectives so like mini objectives within the race to maybe you know boost your recognition that might just be simply like you know let's overtake this rival on track or let's you know be able you know let's do this stint or whatever like that some sort of target on track race day tasks keep players focused on the checkered flag so this is kind of going off you know in real life engineers give drivers little tasks to do to keep them focused on circuit you know it's not they're, they're not all they're not thinking about the big picture sometimes they always think about the micro bit, like what do I have to do in this stint? And the engineers told them that. So this is going to be maybe race day tasks to keep us focused during the race, but that'll actually feed into your reputation. So no longer will you basically ignore what your engineer is saying in terms of the tasks, because if you do ignore them, you won't build reputation that you might need to gain recognition in the game system. And you're going to need that to help you with, you know, getting a new contract. Completing contract targets can help you secure a new deal. So your own team, the team you drive for, will give you targets, you know, and they're going to be ruthless. You know, obviously in real life right now we have a situation where, you know, there's question marks if Ricardo is going to get dropped by RB, you know, if he doesn't hit certain targets maybe of beating Sonoda and qualifying. So we're going to have our own contract targets to secure ourselves a new deal. So it's not a guarantee that you will get a new deal from the current team you're on. You're going to have to keep your wits about you and then pave the way for secret meetings to negotiate a move to a bitter rival so we're getting definitely a new contract system where we can do secret meetings secret meetings to negotiate a move so we can literally pull a fast one you know we can do a lewis hamilton to ferrari we can have a secret meeting with a rival and just go uh, 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 and then go to a new team uh and you know just absolutely dupe our current team so for someone like me who's rarely loyal in my career modes that's going to be brilliant for me secret meetings that is just um just seeing those words that's just sick that's something that we, we've talked about having you know things going on in the background away from the circuit dodgy deals or whatever and having that storyline built this is it this is the storyline being built having secret meetings uh, to be able to actually move away from your own team not just a simple box of i want to sign for this team you actually have to put in the work before so it looks like there's not going to be the bog standard contract system it's going to be there's going to be some sort of ebb and flow with meetings going on and you having to complete contract targets just to even secure a contract with your own current team let alone a different team r d upgrade Driver reputation also affects the support players get from their team. The greater the rep, the more mo motivated the team. Players can go all in on one innovation or spread the resources for a more balanced development. So that last bit is kind of usual kind of thing. Obviously, you know, you can develop the engine, aero, chassis. Uh, you know, you can spread it or go all in on one. But driver reputation, which is also mentioned in the recognition part, also affects support get, uh, players get from the team. So obviously, because of driver career mode, you're not in charge. It's not like my team, you know, we need to get back used to how it used to be pre-2020, where we don't control HQ facilities in the team. That's that's for the team to do. But our reputation could sway the team to support us and what we want to do. Uh, the greater the rep, the more motivated the team is. Motiv motivated the team is, I guess that kind of basically means the bigger rep we have, the more they're going to upgrade you know, the facilities in the background that we don't see to actually match our ambitions, basically, you know, and, you know, obviously, if you're a top driver, let's say, and you move to a midfield team, that lifts the team up, you know, they want to do better. So that's kind of what it's getting at, I think, is driver reputation, you're, if as you grow as a driver, you will bring up your team, and you'll force them to give you upgrades quicker, you know, to, to those facilities in the background you don't get to see, they'll be done quicker. Um, and it ties into recognition then, because the reputation obviously is something you're building for not only your team to do upgrades, but also your contract. So it, it's a, it seems like this new recognition system and reputation system is a really huge part and it's weaved through different sections of the career. It's no longer just like the acclaim, which is like, well, in driver career mode, acclaim really didn't mean much at all. Earn accolades. This is a new thing as well accolades in addition to short-term achievements every driver has long-term 
goals based on season expectations. These could range from number of top 10 finishes, pole positions to claiming the world championship. So uh, this is not a massive thing, but it's like uh, almost like little things to aim for. Nice little badges of honor, you know? You know, obviously in my career modes, when you guys watch them, you know, some of you are interested in, you know, what the stats are for my career. You know, how many, you know, top 10 finishes you ever got? How many podiums do you have? How many wins? So these will keep track of them. So you can actually compare friends to friends or creators to you, you know, different accolades you have to see how your career mode's going and how many accolades you have um, to, to get, basically. And I assume if you drive as a real driver, um, you know, they'll already have stats. So you can add to their stats, basically. Like, you can go out and get Hamilton, that eighth world championship. You can add to Verstappen's number of wins or, you know, pole positions or whatever, basically. Race with a friend. Obviously, we know two-player career is there. The co-op, join forces or race as rivals in the two-player career. With individual driver objectives, players must stay focused to become the team's number one driver. So I think two-player career mode surely will be getting all these sort of things crossed over into two-player career. So again, this refreshes two-player career because these are new things you can also do now versus a friend, versus co-op. But this bit, with individual driver objectives, so separate objectives to your friend who you're playing with, players must stay focused to become the team's number one driver. So now there's maybe going to be actual rivalry where you know, you want to be your not, the number one driver. And maybe that influences, you know, going back to driver reputation, it might affect the support the, the, the team gives you as a player versus your friend in co-op. Um, you know, that's just jumping to conclusions from, you know, being the number one driver. Obviously, if this ties into two-player career, the R&D objectives, um, you know, I assume it'll be feeding into that. And finally, we've got challenge career. So this is an all new thing, challenge career. A perfect introduction before committing to a 24 race season. Jump into the shoes of a pre-selected F1 driver and compete in a series of mini seasons. Community voting would influence the conditions and circuits for future events. So this is an all new game mode, separate from co-op, separate from driver career mode. And it looks to me to kind of be a blend of kind of almost like little, you know, like in, in F1 23, we had like, you know, series in F1 world. This kind of looks like that, but it's for career mode, which is interesting. So it's like a multiplayer sort of aspect of community voting for what scenarios there are and we'll all get the same, the same scenario so I will get the same scenario you are playing my friend is playing you know whatever we're all playing the same scenario and we can maybe you know compare how we're doing but it's actually offline racing so it's actually still a bit of career mode fun but it's matched against other people basically with community voting and different scenarios um so it's like a little taster so that could be quite cool there's new challenges that's basically like almost like a scenario mode but everyone gets the same scenario and you can actually compare it kind of so that will be something to keep an eye on to see if that's actually gonna be worth it to play maybe that'll be quite interesting to see if there's you know uh, enough content there that's the real question for me is is there enough content there in the challenge career basically uh to, to warrant playing it obviously you know those hardcore fans like myself we're gonna play normal driver career mode but challenge career could be a nice little breather so those are the big headlines we know right now from driver career mode gaining recognition r&d upgrades slightly changing maybe to to play more into your your reputation earning accolades you've got two two player career mode which maybe has a different more aggressive system for how you go up against each other and then challenge career and trust me there's a lot, lot more that I already know, but unfortunately, I can't say it right now. But next week, you may have already seen that EA F1 on their YouTube channel. There's a gameplay reveal uh, uh, video coming on Monday. Well, from Monday next week, I can talk more about the gameplay and the handling and stuff like that. And then later next week, I will be able to fully reveal everything to do with career mode. There's a lot to sink our teeth into as career mode players. Like, you know how last year I got so frustrated and angry about nothing being improved? The same kind of for F1 22. Even if we're being real, F1 2021 didn't even have any updates as well. It was like one update. So we actually haven't had a tangible big upgrade like this to a career mode since my team got introduced. And this is almost like a new driver career mode being introduced because there are 
big updates, big changes, you know, talking about broadcast styles, it really adds to it, you know, new audio and everything like that. Um, it's going to feel finally like a proper new F1 game when it comes to career mode. Um, thankfully, thankfully. And I'm just excited to finally be able to talk about it maybe next week. But let's now wheel it back a little bit and just quickly go over the other bits in the press release, like the new EA Sports dynamic handling. So working closely with the current world champion, uh, Max Verstappen, the new EA Sports dyna dynamic handling redefines the feel of the car to produce a realistic and predictable performance across the wheel and pad. So they worked with... Max Verstappen, who notoriously maybe hasn't been a fan of the F1 games, but he's given his input. So technically, hopefully you'd hope it gets a bit more enjoyable if uh, Max is putting some input into it. All new suspension kinematics, upgraded tire model, advanced aerodynamic simulation, and new engine and car setup options enhance the driving experience. So that's quite a lot of different buzzwords. Obviously, I have not played the game yet, so I can't tell you what it feels like right now. And we haven't seen gameplay officially yet, so we need to wait and see. Yes, there are, unfortunately, some leaks from the beta. I'm not going into any of that. It's a closed beta. I'm not getting involved in leaks. I'm going to wait and actually have my chance to play the game myself and see proper gameplay. But cornering, rolling resistance, brake pressure, ambient track temperature, and variable conditions enable drivers to receive immediate feedback to maximize their own performance. There's a lot of different bugs words going on here and it's way more than any previous year i know last year they talked about finally you know fixing the handling from f122 into 23 and they did obviously with the traction but this is a lot of new stuff especially new suspension kinematics like they haven't you know so far with the handling they don't really ever talk about suspension travel and stuff like that and the suspension has been very very basic in terms of the way it wobbles and like you know actually works with the car so uh the fact they're mentioning new suspension kinematics is pretty promising so Let's see. Let's wait and see. It's a lot of buzzwords. You know, truthfully, we don't know what the car is going to handle like until we actually fully try it uh, at the full launch. You know, even from the beta to the full launch, it will change. So let's just wait and see, basically. But, you know, that, that's what they're, what they're saying about the handling. And then in terms of anything else, we've already gone through the track enhancements of the circuits. Actual driver audio samples, like I said, taken from F1 broadcast, adds a new dimension as they react to on-track incidents. And you would have heard this in the trailer. They played quite a few driver radios on the trailer on purpose because it's those kind of driver radios we might be hearing now in the game if you play as one of those drivers uh, in the driver career mode or, or I think just in general maybe in the broadcast packaging and a new broadcast presentation package and cutscenes add to the race day immersion that's good that's always good to hear because the animations and cutscenes have been pretty much the same now for the last like what I want to say, like, I'm not even kidding, like, eight years, kind of. So I really hope there's all new broadcast packaging and all new cutscenes and animations for all of that because it literally has been the same actual animations, you know, for, for the last eight years. So uh, hopefully that's going to be a nice, fr uh, fr uh, fresh facelift to actually feel like a new game on top of the fact that we actually know all this new stuff is happening for career mode. And then finally, obviously, F1 World is still there, unfortunately. Uh, the home and multiplayer, Grand Prix, time trial in it, and then there's a new fan zone feature to be honest i'm not that, that interested it's probably just going to be kind of like f1 life f1 world you know just some sort of way to try and make you do these things and collect things for me personally just not that interested but um yeah i mean there's the podium pass confirmed podium pass is there joining game wide time limited league that includes collaborative goals uh against rivals yada 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 my team returns but we know that my team is basically not getting an update this year uh, and probably we can expect a My Team upgrade in the next F1 game because the F1 game always works on every other year. So this year, the focus for the team has been on driver career mode, which I'm fine with because, to be honest, it's going to be a nice little breather. It's going to be nice to change up the meta, so to speak, of you know playing driver career mode again because, to be honest, driver career mode is exactly what we all, you know, started playing career mode on like you know how many years you know from f1 20 was it 2012 to f1 2019 you know my bread and butter was the driver career mode so to say we didn't even call it driver career mode. we just called it career mode because that was all we knew then my team came along so it's gonna be kind of nice actually to go back to driving for official f1 teams and kind of creating a storyline that's actually kind of feeling more authentic because it's the actual team you're having to drive for rather than some made-up team and in the case of console players some pretty naff looking generic 
deliveries, basically, whereas now will be the official F1 car. So that is absolutely everything covered from the F124 reveal today. And like I said, there is more to come. We already know that they're going to be dropping a gameplay actual first video on Monday next week. And well, hopefully I won't get in trouble for saying that there's also a load of other info that's embargoed that I will be able to talk about next week for Career Mode specifically and flesh out all those headlines, basically, and answer maybe questions you have about how these systems are going to work. And trust me, it's going to be worth the wait because, yeah, finally, finally, after what, four years, we're actually getting a proper new career mode with a new set of features to actually dive into that we've never played before, all new UI, etc, etc. It's going to be cool to finally talk about it next week. But yeah, if you guys have enjoyed this video, then be sure to hit the like button. Let me know what you thought in the comments below of all this new reveal info. And if you're on your round here, do get subscribed for all that extra intel, etc. next week when I'm allowed to talk about it. But till then, guys, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.